afternoon. Welcome to another Thursday Live. Welcome to my home. Um, I am Nadine Fossler, better known as Mama Choco, and I say this every time, but I sincerely mean it. My purpose to be here today is to inspire you to be creative. Um, I haven't been here for a few weeks because life happens. And something that I realized quite recently is that life happens to all of us, even the loss of a loved one. So in this time, we've been mourning, we've been sad, we've been going through a grieving process, but every day we're feeling stronger and we've, we are facing life. And um, it's not easy, but I've always also realized after numerous conversations with many people that this is what makes us human and this is what makes us stronger for the next person that needs to face the same in their lives because no one of us are excluded from life and the things that happen on our journey. And um, today I am going to take you through the process of painting a piece of furniture and due to everything that's been happening, time to prepare things have been very limiting, but I've also realized that maybe it's, it's nice to see what the process involves and what the, what the thinking process is all about and you are going to be part of that in this live session today. Now, very important to remember is that nothing is edited. This is my heart speaking to, to your heart in a live, um, very true, sincere fashion. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Doesn't matter where in the world you are watching from. Feel the love, the energy, the passion, the creativity, and just, just maybe find a sense of, of confidence to do something creative in your own space. Okay, so the piece of furniture behind me was or is still a veneered surface. So I have actually sanded down the surface a few weeks back before everything happened in our lives with a Ryhobi mouse sander. So this is actually the veneer of the wood that you're still seeing and you will see um, on the top here, I try to get rid because the veneer has a very shiny um, feel to it. I try to get rid of that shininess and actually get more of an authentic wood surface and texture. But with the mouse sander, and this is not the mouse sander's fault, it's my, my, my mistake I've made here, is I've pressed too hard and there you can see I've actually damaged the wood in areas and this is purely because it's not solid wood it's a veneer but I do want to have that more authentic wood feel and texture to the surface now the inspiration for today's session is this piece of driftwood that I picked up next to the ocean and on one of my walks and we are going to instead of bleaching this piece of furniture because this is something that you can possibly bleach, but it is a lengthy, tedious process personally for me. Maybe it's something that you like to do and no offense. It's just for me, I need, due to time limitations, I need to find ways of doing things easily and quickly. Um, so let me show you a few ideas and colors that I'm going to use to accomplish a bleached, almost a um, driftwood look and feel to this so just to get back to the process that was followed, I've sanded it with a mouse, Ryhobi mouse sander, first 100 grit piece of sandpaper, and then I moved to smoother, to smoother grits, um, to 20, 400, just to get this very smooth, even feel. After I've sanded, I've cleaned and washed it off well with lacquer thinners and allowed a uh, more or less a 40 minute drive time. Okay, now the fun is going to start. I'm going to share the colors of the paints as I'm using it. So I want to create an even 
finish and color on my surface and I'm going to focus on this door and maybe those doors as I proceed. So the first color we are going to work with is Lady Lisa just to get an even brown tone on our surface. Now instead of solid painting it I'm going to use a piece of mutton cloth that has been dipped in water. Okay, I'm going to use a paintbrush and I am going to spread Lady Lisa, choco paint in Lady Lisa on my mutton cloth. Now the nice thing about choco is that you don't need to paint a primer on your surface. You don't first need to paint a universal undercoat. Um, the paint, choco paint does adhere to almost any surface as long as the surface is grease and oil free because choco is water based, eco friendly, non toxic. I'm an ocean lover, so those are things that are really important to me is to make sure I work with a product that is friendly to the environment. Okay, once I'm going to start washing the surface, I will immediately see how porous the wood is, how dry and thirsty the wood is, to see if I need to apply more paint on my cloth. I'm now folding my cloth like a ball in the palm of my hand, and I'm just going to wipe this first paint color onto my surface. So it's not a solid, um, wood and um, color that I do want to apply. I do want to see the texture, but I just want to tone down the dark and uneven tones on my surface. So, you, in actual fact, you are using very little paint. It's just in the initial stages to make sure your cloth is really wet and full of the paint. And actually, the more you work with your cloth, the easier it becomes to work with it. Initially, it's quite stiff. you can see how the color is already changing and already it's looking better. Okay, so this is step one. And now for the entire piece of furniture, I'm going to do it in the exact same way. So what I'm doing over here, I'm just adding more water to my cloth, adding more paint. And I'm not working in circular motions yet. I might later when I apply the other coats and colors. I just want my surface to absorb this color first. And how I'm going to approach this is to start with my darkest color first, which in this case is Lady Lisa. Something that I do mention often is that color is personal, a personal choice. And remember now, I have selected that piece of driftwood as the inspiration for my piece. So very important when you attempt a project is to make sure that you have a vision in mind. And sometimes you need to sleep on that, dream about it, um, take time to plan it before you just start doing. If you need to be impulsive, go for it. That's also part of a creative process. Something that will determine colors and techniques is the area, the space where you will put this piece of furniture. 
So things that need to be kept in consideration is what do my floors look like? Because that's the one surface that's very difficult to change and also very costly. So you need to make sure whatever I do, it will complement my flooring. What does my wall surface look like? Will the colors and the technique I'm going to apply complement my wall? And in paint and also um, decor, decor decisions, we say that the colors need to marry each other. So there needs to be a marriage of colors. I have a very cute face behind this camera. Kaylee, um, whenever she feels I look too serious, she just gives the most beautiful angel smile to remind me to smile. Kaylee, thank you. Okay. So here's coat one, color one on this surface. And this is the darkest of my colors. Okay. Something that I will do, just quickly look here, in these grooves, I'm painting with an artist brush my paint color in because it's too difficult to reach it just with a cloth and then I simply wipe with my cloth to make sure my color sits in all the grooves and crevices. Okay, now to save time, um, I'm not going to do the entire piece with this first technique and first color because you will be bored to death. So I am going to stop here with this color and then continue with the next just to ensure that everything makes sense and if you need to do this technique on a surface of your own that you know exactly how to. So something that is important to keep in mind is that my surface is not varnished. I have removed the varnish coating. Else the wash technique will not look authentic. Okay, it will look very streaky on a varnished surface and you actually want the wood to absorb the colors. Um, and that's why I've sanded first. With choco, if you just want to paint a piece of furniture, whether it's laminated, whether it's melamine kitchen cupboards, whether it's varnished, but you don't want to do a wash technique like this. You simply just clean with lacquer thinners and then start painting. No sanding is required when it's normal painting. But I am doing a washed line wash technique on a raw timber surface. Other surfaces where this technique is very successful is cement, um, raw cement, where the cement can absorb the colors, bricks. If you have those ugly, I wanna, uh, I'm saying ugly, um, you know, brick, raw brick surfaces, walls in your home that you don't like and your husband don't want you to paint it, you can wash it and I'll, I'll show a different technique quite soon and then it will still look like brick but you will just change the color. Kaylee is smiling, but Kaylee, we all know we have sometimes those things in our homes that we do want to change. And then um, our partners are not happy with our ideas. So you just do it when, when they're not there and just say sorry afterwards. And I promise you the moment they see the change and the vision you have, they will just love you even more. Okay, so now, the next color I'm going to use is Ishmael's Ish. Now important, in practice, this needs to dry first. Okay, so here's the color, Ishmael's Ish, or Aish, like someone, someone that I know very well calls it. There's no right or wrong. Um, so I'm using a next cloth. So in practice, your first color and needs to dry first before you start applying your second color. We just, for this session, don't have the time for it. 
So I'm doing the exact same process. I'm applying some paint on a damp cloth. So it's a transition process from dark to light. There you can see how the colors differ. So there's that and now I'm going to make sure it's evenly distributed into my cloth and also up and down motions I'm going to wash with Ishma. I just make sure I move with the grain of the wood at the top section that on my door I move up and down. I am even washing this lock opening over here just because I can. That's also a personal choice if you want to cover it with masking tape and just keep it in its natural color, that's completely up to you. Okay, now my second color is on, and a while I'm going to allow for this just to dry a bit because it just needs to cure a bit else it's wet on wet i'm going to start focusing on the top of my cupboard i must be honest with you it's this is not a project i'm going to complete this week next week i'll be adding something else on top of this piece but we first need to lighten the wood Get it softer, more even, more pretty. Okay, I'm just going to stop here for now so that this can just settle in and dry a bit. Okay, now I'm going to proceed to the top of this piece. Just need to make sure if you look through the screen that everything is neat. But I'm working my own shadow, so forgive me if I'm missing any details. Okay, so the key, key tip it needs to be even. Okay. okay. Oh, I'm already loving it. We'll get rid of the pinkish tones as we continue. Okay, now for the top, I'm going to work on the top section now, Kaylee, is we are going to use antique brown clay. So I do want to keep some, remember the purpose is I do love wood, but I don't like the tone of this wood and I don't want to spend time um, bleaching it. And you use such little pr product and um, the way we are working now that you can do a few pieces like this. The product I'm going to work with is called Antique Brown Glaze. And I'm going to use that to stain the top section of my piece. So once again, damp cloth. I'm going to use a spoon. It does come with a stirring stick. But mine was standing in my garage. I don't know what I've done with that stick. Okay, so I'm stirring it well because there are pigment mixed into the content. So the antique brown glaze is a sealant, but I use it mostly if I need to emphasize crevices and grooves on embellishments when we do stencil of Paris 
if you have not joined our YouTube channel yet, please go do so. There's a lovely how-to series currently on there. Everything is free um, and you can binge watch and find more ideas. Okay. So, in essence, the instructions on the lid of the antique brown clay says, dilute with water, but that's when you do artistic smaller surfaces. I am going to stain my wood, okay? So I'm simply, I poured some in a container, I'm simply dipping a damp cloth into my mixture, only half of my cloth, and there I have something some areas that are still clean before i'm going to apply it i am going to spread with water and a cloth just some water onto my surface that my surface is nice and damp because this actually helps that the pigment and the color in the antique brown lace just spreads evenly onto my surface and stains it evenly everything is water-based you can even, if you want to, change the color of the antique brown glaze, mix different chocolate colors into it. So if you want to mute it, you can, for instance, add some level slides or some of the colors I've worked with previously into the antique brown glaze just to soften the tone. The possibilities are really endless. Okay, so my surface is wet. And now I'm going to stain my surface with my chocolate paints and tea brown clays. Very evenly with the grain of the wood, I'm spreading it from left to right. Do the front section as well. This to absorb, being to be absorbed into the wood. Okay, and while that is happening, already it looks stunning. Okay, there's more to happen, but this already makes a huge difference. Okay, does it look nice through your? screen there okay because sometimes on a camera screen you see lines that you don't see with your eye so i just want to make sure the visuals on your side is perfect and beautiful okay now while we wait for that to dry we are going to continue with a next coat here but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do a dry brush technique and then that will be the last step for today's life okay the dry brush technique I'm going to apply on this front section of my piece of furniture and once my stained top has dried I'm going to apply a dry brush technique there as well so I have found this brush in my garage and I always try to look for new equipment like I say, it has stiff brush, br bristles. If you have paint brushes that look horrific and you do want to throw them away, don't. Because those ones with the spread out bristles and that look horrible are usually the ones that work best for a dry brush technique. Let me show you how to dry brush. So I'm going to decan some Davet. There's the color, Davet. And you know Choco is focused on job creation and empowerment. And all of these colors that I've been using today are named after amazing people, either in our Choco factory or our clients. Okay, so here's some divert in a paint tray. There you can see it's a Harris brush I'm using. Okay, 
I am taking a dry matten cloth, my brush is dry, my cloth is dry, this is a dry brush technique. So the drier your equipment, the better. Stiff bristles works like a charm. Okay. And I evenly spread the paint onto my bristles. Dry brush. So your brush really needs to be dry. Okay. And now I'm going to brush. Sorry, Kaylee. Here you need to maybe zoom in to see because it's a subtle change. Can you see the difference? Okay, so now we're getting to that driftwood effect. And as I feel my brush becomes too dry, I dip it in more paint, but once again, make sure it's dry. So whenever I'm stuck in terms of paint techniques or I don't know what needs to happen next on my surface, something, and you do want to create a subtle effect on your painted surface, dry brush technique or a subtle sanding technique are my go-tos. Does it make sense? Okay, it looks beautiful. Okay, so dry brush is the next, and I'm going to make sure I do everything the same. This looks very much bleached with some effect on it. Okay, and if you leave me, I will just continue painting for days. Okay. Now I'm going to do the exact same with the top. So here you can see some spills of the dry brush bristles. Oh, my hat, let me just quickly clean it. Okay, I'm just evenly wiping onto my surface. front is nicely finished off. And I actually don't want to dry brush the top. I think the top is beautiful. The only thing I'll do on these areas where I've sta sanded too much, once my antique glaze has dried, I will just stay more on those areas. But what I can see now is nice contrast between the front section and then the top. And if we look at that side, Kaylee, what the piece looked like earlier today, a few moments ago, there's already a big change happening. 
Okay, so this is where the session ends for today. Um, now, a few things are happening till we are going to see each other. It's Mother's Day, and I am blessed with the most amazing mom. She's my best friend, my biggest fan, my mentor, my soundboard. She is my everything. And please spend time. We, we said we are going to have a belated Mother's Day, so we are going to celebrate ours next weekend, not this one, but to all the mothers out there. May you be blessed abundantly with wisdom, with love, with everything that you need to make a difference, but also to feel loved. And that's why all of us need to make sure our moms feel like that. Then something that's happening in the Choco calendar, I am traveling to Cape Town on the 27th of May to do a national workshop in Stellenbosch. Should you want to attend, please look onto our website on the workshop tab and find more information there. And then my message for all of you, and this is based after a conversation I had earlier today is to dream and never to stop dreaming and have big beautiful wonderful dreams and don't sleep on them but chase them love you lots till next time mama choco signing out bye